Hi guys, so let's just start that. Um, so yeah, the session, obviously a community session. I would not get away with this with the, the Veeam, Veeam branding police. Um, so I want to talk about the, the benefits of clones or how we can leverage data, whether that be replica replicas to a secondary location, whether that be backup files, whether that be storage snapshots and using that cloning technology within some, some of Veeam storage integration. So I'm Michael Cade, I'm a technical evangelist at Veeam Software. So we've all read that right, if you've been in here at all. So just to set the scene, and I wanted to get my boss to ring me and leave me a, a, an audio voice on this so that we had a, a, a bit of a play. But ultimately, just to set the scene is we have this guy, a SQL dev guy who's Dev Vader, who um, rings up and he wants a copy of his, his SQL database server, is it the, the production workload um, SQL box, and he's asking the infrastructure guy to provide him that. Now, in a traditional world, it's, it's kind of, it's very difficult to start spinning that up and keep keep giving this near new data to to, to our dev guys to to test and, and uh, develop against that. So what we're going to run through is how Veeam can start, or how how easy it is for Veeam to to leverage that data through replicas, backups, as well as storage snapshots. So first, the, there's three components that we need to think about and, and configure in here. So the first thing is a virtual lab. So the virtual lab is the networking device that sits in between the production uh, workload as well as the into this isolated bubble, this isolated network that we're going to use. Um, it provides a, the access for the client or the test and dev, the dev guy to get into that workload and start running tests against that. So. How does that look visually? It ultimately uses a virtual switch that's created either by us or, or you can use a manual configuration. You can also use virtual distributed switches as well in the, the larger environments. But what it consists of is a resource pool within your vSphere environment. It creates a VM folder to, to keep it segregated away as well as that standard vSwitch. That's the minimum of requirements that we need. So just to run through how easy it is to get that, that up and running, there's, or not. Um, so uh, within the console, under backup infrastructure, we have a sure backup uh, tab, which allows us to then go in and create this virtual lab. So give it a name, we choose the host that we'd like that to go on to, we, and then we choose the data store. Now the data store in this instance is because we don't want to start writing or we can't write to a storage snapshot or to a replica or to a backup because we want them to stay as a backup, right? So once we've finished, we want to be able to keep it and preserve that. So in this instance, we choose a data store, a live VMware data store that we want to put all of our redo logs or any changes that we push to that, that virtual machine. We're then going to configure where the folder within vSphere, so if you've got a, a specific development folder or naming structure within your vSphere environment, then we can, we can start to set that here, as well as, um, as well as the IP addressing that you want to use within that, that infrastructure, as well as what that virtual lab, that mini appliance that we're going to push out, what IP address scheme that needs to, to have to bridge that connection between the two. Once that's done, that's going to go away to, to vSphere. That's going to create that resource pool, that folder. It's going to deploy our, our really small virtual lab appliance, run that configuration, power it up, power it down to run that. Once that's done, we then move on to that the next component that's required, and that's the application group. So if we take, for example, the, uh, the SQL side of things, so it's not just a SQL box we want to bring up. There are going to be dependencies around that, whether that be a domain controller, DNS, THCP, might be a web server front end. So this is where that application group comes in. And it really is just a pool of applications, so a group of applications. But just remember that the dependencies are, are required. So again, in that same backup infrastructure, We run through, we create that group, we give it a name, SQL or vzilla. In this instance, we select those virtual machines. Now notice when we select the virtual machines on the next, on the next page is when we go add VM, we can choose from a backup, we can choose from a replica or a storage snapshot. This can be mixed as well. So it might be that we want to leverage the backups from a, a, the domain controller backup because we don't need to take that out of a storage snapshot. It might reside on a storage snapshot that we don't integrate with. 
but the sequel we want it to be on the on the uh, the production storage we want it to be on that fast efficient performance storage because ultimately that's what our dev guy may want he wants the performance to be able to, to run against that what we can do in from an advanced point of view is we can start changing what resources we need so when you bring this application group into into the the uh, into the environment we you obviously need the resources you need the CPU you need the memory but we don't want to there might be an instance where you don't need to or you don't want to consume all of that if you've got a hundred 128 gig SQL box that test and dev guy probably doesn't need all of that resources so we've got the ability to go in there and change what what percentage what CPU what memory looks like as well as the boot time so every we, we turn on each VM in an order in a process and depending on what that operating system and the application looks like that's where we'll um, we can define how long that that's going to take so then the third and final um, component is the sure backup job so this is where it pulls together that virtual lab and that application group and actually runs that so sure backup from a veeam perspective is our the ability to verify that the backups or replicas are in a good state and what it does it spins up that application group in the order that you've set tests against the app the vm and the os and then a, a, a report is sent to your to your backup admin to say yeah we've verified that the backup mounts and we can get get recovery the extent of that is we can leave this running so that people can get into that virtual lab and start running that test and dev type type play so um, from a storage snapshot point of view what we do is we take that initial VMware snapshot but then pretty much instantly we take that storage snapshot releasing the VMware snapshot and from that we then mount the snapshot directly back into vSphere as a data store and then we take the virtual machines that we've de de uh, deciphered in the application group and spin them up so from a snapshot point of view it detects the latest storage snapshot or creates one if there's not one in there it will uh, present that new data store into that ESXi host that we presented in the in the first virtual lab configuration reconfigures all of that VMX that configuration file and in the demo that you'll see it actually uses um, I'm using the same host it's a demo lab um, so there's a Mac conflict in there but ultimately it changes all of that VMX that config file structure in there and then it will turn on in the order that you that you want it to, to go in so back into our, our backup uh, backup and replication tab they uh, it's as simple as just creating this sure backup job and from here this is where we merge those two together and you can use multiple um, you can have multiple uh, application groups in the same job if that's what you what you require so first off we choose that virtual lab then we choose that application group and this is where we need to keep if we want to keep that running not just that verification job that little tick box is all we need to do to keep that running and then you manually stop that session so we can set things like snmp traps at this point and we can send reporting run that job automatically or we can schedule it to run on a weekly daily basis so that the dev guys has always got the nearly new data to, to play with so three pretty easy steps to get that up and running um, and then finally just to show that uh, the the whole process come together and actually get it up and running is the actual sandbox itself so over on the left hand side you see the the vSphere web client over on the right you'll see our, our, our Veeam infrastructure our Veeam backup and replication so we want to go and kick start that that sure backup job so once that then kicks in and starts running you'll see over here in this vzilla lab the resource group and then the you probably can't see it but the vzilla lab which is the virtual lab is then going to be powered on and starts starts that process of giving the ip address and bridging that gap between the two networks over on the right hand side you'll see the virtual machines that we added in that application group in the order that they're spinning up you see that they're powering on see here that that machine is now running from the storage snapshot and the management server that's also going to populate in here shortly which is our domain controller is running from a backup so you can see from here we're diving into those machines this could simulate a, a, a dev guy running those tests against that and, and performing those changes what i'm doing just for the the purposes of the 
of the demo is we're going to now jump into here and we're also going to jump into the the live system i'm just going to show that the recycle bin has an iso file in and then we're going to delete the iso file from the dev box simulating a a load change or, or some sort of table update within that SQL server and then you'll see that it's, it's not touching the, the production SQL box at all. So you see that we've got our SQL box that's our live system so you see a nice theme background you see that the ISO is in there let's jump to our our virtual lab our sandbox and we can go in there and we can delete that out which is not affecting one the backup or the snapshot because we can't write to that that ultimately then changes sit and reside on the data store that we that we suggested you see we can go into sql start changing tables running data mining against that sort of sort of thing um, potentially run windows updates against those machines as well and then all we do it to to stop that session is over on the right hand side you say stop session when you're done this all can be done for, through powershell i've got some resources at the end to share and then you'll see that it starts coming through and, and shutting down those machines and then removing them, leaving the, the VZilla lab, the virtual lab, powered off, um, but still still in a position where it can be leveraged again at the next time that we need to give the uh, the access access to that dev guy. So then at the end of that, so we've had the call from the from Dev Vader, he's come in, he's he's asked for this this clone this this uh, workload and then ultimately we can get that up and running we can get that back and and give them that access to that service or that that workload to be able to run their tests against that so i guess just in closing so all of that i've showed you in the in the ui that we can we can run that quite easy wizard driven very usable but ultimately if you want to look at automating that or giving that that uh, capability to your dev team then there are a full PowerShell commandlets available for that virtual lab creation from that application group. And the important one is that sure backup. So these are one-time settings. So you create a virtual lab and it's there forever. Same with the application group. You can add new VMs in, but ultimately you're gonna create an application group that has all of the VMs that you need. The sure backup one though, if you look at that from a PowerShell point of view, that's, that's what you need. Um, that will allow you to give that PowerShell code to your dev guys to then start using that that, uh, that sandbox environment. And then that's the, that's the time. So if anyone's got any questions at all in regards to that, the whole clone process, the, the whole leveraging of data, then I'll, we'll be out there for a, for a couple of minutes. But 